Welcome, everybody, to Avaraxis Precipice, Episode 1! Uh, I'm John Bettina, I'm the Game Master. Uh, he'll be joining us for our little kind of excursion into the universe of The Expanse. Uh, this is an actual play of The Expanse role-playing game put up by Green Ronin Publishing. Uh, they have been kind enough to let us give away a player bundle, uh, among a few other things as we go on the stream, but we're going to start off simple with the player bundle. Uh, if you can go ahead and type the word Apostle into the chat, just Apostle, uh, you will be entered in to the giveaway, which we will then uh, draw a random winner at the uh, end of the stream. Uh, but thank you again to uh, Green Road Publishing for supporting this thing, which they had no idea what we were even going to do. So uh, I appreciate their faith. Uh, we got to do a quick shout out uh, before we begin, too. We have a Patreon, which will be linked to in the chat here sooner or later. Uh, but one of uh, my dear friends, a few of our friends, uh, Daniel. Uh, did throw in for the Oi Belt of Loda. So we're going to give Daniel an Oi Belt of Loda together. Whenever you guys are ready, go ahead and give him an Oi Belt of Loda. Oi Belt of Loda! Oi Belt of Loda! All right. Awesome. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right into this, folks. Uh, so a lot of you have been residing on Tycho Station uh, for maybe a little bit of time, a lot of time. It's unclear. It's varied for different and you're all here for your own purposes, your own reasons. Um, what those are, you can keep to yourself or you're welcome to announce to the world. Uh, some of you might be more vocal, some of you might be less. Um, but Tycho is definitely the center kind of, of between the outer planets and the inner planets. Um, obviously the major uh, production here has been the Nauvoo. Uh, no matter where you go, you hear about the Nauvoo, you see pictures of it, you can, if you look out any window when you're coming in, you can't miss it. It's, you know, five times the size of the station and it's massive. Um, for respective reasons, you have been, uh, got an invite uh, and currently sit in a room it is a rather large room for Tycho Station, considering it's not a dwelling. It's an office. Um, this room has kind of like a simulation of uh, wood paneling. Uh, for those of you that know what wood paneling is, um, it is uh, has bookshelves, which oddly enough actually hold real books. Uh, more books than almost any of you have seen in your life, except for maybe uh, Myrtle and Abby. Um, but, I mean, actual, like, paper books. Um, it's a little stuffy in here. It's not, like, it's not an open room. There's only one way in, one way out, really. Uh, it's part of an office and such. Uh, you can see that the, the walls have some large murals and paintings on them. Um, of particular, uh, behind the wooden desk is a large painting. We're talking like probably a good, like uh, almost two meters across of a, you know, uh, pa kind of paler skinned, uh, blonde haired man reaching into the ground, pulling up some golden tablets into his hands, looking at these. Um, for some of you, you see what you've been told is a horizon. Uh, what is like grass and trees and such in the background of this gentleman's uh, depiction, if you will. Um, of note, though, directly in front of you, uh, as you guys sit in this, this set of five chairs, there's, there's six chairs in the room, one behind the desk and one chair for each of you. Um, there's a large book on the on the table, leather bound, pretty, pretty thick uh, on a stand. Um, on the side of it, you can see there is a large kind of bronze statue of what the Nauvoo will look like. You all know what the Nauvoo is going to look like. You can't, like I said, you can't miss it. Everybody who wants is on Taika wants to work on the Nauvoo. They want, they want the jobs. Um, but, uh, and there's some pictures of some family. He, uh, there's one man that keeps on reoccurring. He's an older man. It looks like he's with kids, grandkids, great grandchildren. A uh, fair number of them too. Uh, you're, you're guessing some of this guy's got a Pretty big family, probably like 20, 30 people easily. Um, but the book, uh, as you kind of, you can't really miss it because in gold foil lettering on it, it says the Book of Mormon in very big letters on the cover of it. You are in the office of one Apostle Birch, one of the top ranking members of the Mormon church anywhere and the top ranking member on Tycho. That is, and is overseeing the Naboo project. Um, you guys have been sitting in here for a few minutes, kind of shoot, shooting the shit. You guys maybe have seen each other around the station. Some of you know each other, Ben, others. Um, you're not sure if they're making you wait for 
on purpose or the guy's just busy or what but what kind of uh anyone want to break the tension i don't really enjoy sitting around waiting and nothing happening so i hope something changes sooner than later okay so you see this this gentleman kind of sitting he's kind of uncomfortable he's like this is why are we waiting this guy's just making his way it's an, it's an intimidation it's intimidation crap this is what you would do to like keep, like you know punks you would shake down make him sit in the room for a little bit before you come in <laughs> yeah that uh that book there yeah whatever people you you and and even Myrtle, you can't help but look at the book and like you, you know that's worth a lot of money. Like out yeah. here, that's just a I mean, that's like utter like people that want to buy like fine wines and cheeses. You're kind of like you get that, but this like man, this is like ostentatious to have this far out. Yeah, it's like this belongs to somebody, and that somebody's got some deep pockets, and so it's curious that it's here. Um, because that's not something that you would just put out in front of anybody just here on the station. Yeah, and, it, and this is not a public space. Like I said, it's one way in, one way out. It's an office, but uh, for sure. Um, what about Onyx? Or... Uh, I think Onyx is, uh, I'm sort of nervously sitting there looking around, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get up and uh, look at this uh, piece of art behind Big Man's, Big Boss Man's desk. Um, you get up to it and you can tell that it is a fine oil painting, actually. Um, this is a rather dangerous thing to move through space, honestly. Once again, uh, no expense has been pay- been spared to get these kind of items here for comfort. Uh, you're you're absolutely one hundred positive that whoever's going to come in here to meet with you is an Earther. Okay, now I'm going to touch it real quick, and then I'm going to sit back down. It's it's weird feeling like usually when you touch art, uh, the texture you feel is like the wall it's been painted on. This actually has its own texture from the oils that it's been painted with. We see like a camera or anything watching us from just. Um, give me a quick uh, uh, sight check or investigation or something like that. Perception, will that work? That works, yeah. Six. Six, okay. Um, you look around and uh, you're not seeing any cameras are distinct. Uh, you did see a camera on the way in, but that was only monitoring the door. You're you're not so sure this guy would have a camera inside his office, but if he did, he would have a high quality one that could be easily uh, hidden. Um, anyone else probably, have anything they want to? Yeah, I would probably like lean over to Myrtle, uh, and I would kind of point at the the big picture of the blind man and the horizon type of thing, be like. Damn Earthers, they like their books, yeah, and they like their pictures of themselves. What kind of game you think this Koyo will be playing? You're on mute. What? What's that? Cut out on the stand, uh, Donna. You just—they've got these fancy places. They're on Luna and big, huge temples down on Earth, and I. I wouldn't trust him, but uh, it's really funny. They just use this one guy's face for everything. He's like their prophet or something like that. I think his name's John or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm used to these types of people and they like to show off. They're very proud. And all of you have have encountered the Mormons on the station like they're around Uh, and a lot of them are kind of, you know, you you, you would have talked to them and, and some of you would talk to them in hopes of maybe getting a job. But then other times it's just like they want to talk to you because they want you to, you know, come to their services, uh, come to a game night, stuff like that. Um, they, they, see, they, they seem to be inviting, but like um, the, the those of you that are from the belt kind of get that they're, there's something they're trying to sell, but you're not sure what it is. Like it, it feels like they're trying to sell you something. Um, so, okay, as you um, guys kind of converse and uh, Onyx, you're sitting and looking at this painting really closely, the door opens up. And you, you see a, a, a man with a white beard, uh, pretty pale complexion, uh, definitely older, probably uh, in his 90s, um, kind of walk through. He's actually in pretty good health, though. Like He's actually not like hobbled over or anything like that. He's actually seems like he's in pretty good health. Uh, he's definitely getting some of the best like drugs and treatment that the Earthers have to offer. And he, he kind of walks in and uh, sees you looking at the painting. And uh, as he walks past you, kind of he kind of nods at you all. And... Um, 
he sees you look at the painting. He says, "It's a, it's a, it's a fine work of art, isn't it?" It's not bad. Uh, I could probably, I could paint this, no problem. You were an artist. Oh uh, yes, yes, and uh, I start sort of like fumbling through my pockets and uh, finding some weird junk sculptures and stuff I've constructed. <laughs> you know, I just get into it with him. Yeah, two man, check it out. I can make, uh, I make paintings. I can fix things. I, I make these little sculptures. And he, he, you like, hold, you hold the sculpture up to him. Yeah. He takes yeah. a look at it. And he says, "This is." Uh, what, what does it depict? Uh, it is a. Let's see. We'll we'll say it's just like some. It's some uh, asteroids, like you know, fro- like sort of suspended around planets and stuff. And then I have like a face in the middle, like a a weird amorphous okay. face. He, it's he look, pretty bad. He looks at it and he's like, "This is. He's all. It's fascinating. He's all. This is. You truly have a gift." Ah, thank you, Taki. Taki. Says, "Please, uh, might might you have a seat?" Uh, to uh, and I'll and I'll get to the business at hand uh, with you. I'm sure your time is valuable. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit down. He goes and sits in his chair. It's large. Uh, though you know, you're you're pretty sure his chair is bigger than Mr. Johnson's on the uh, than Fred Johnson's on the the station. Um, it's a little ostentatious. It kind of you know it comes up above his head and such like that too. Um, he says, "Well, once again, thank you all for uh, coming. Uh, look, I." I know this may seem unusual. Uh, none of you, I, I, I haven't spoken to any of you before or contacted any of you, um, but I have a particular, the, the, I have a, myself and the church have a particular need uh, we were hoping perhaps you could fulfill. Um, if any of you are interested in, I know some of you have been interested in working on the Naboo project and this would definitely be something in that vein. Oh, I do know that, I- what's that? Oh, I would sure. Uh, I would be interested. Um, I don't know what your supply chain is on goods, but I'm always happy to see what kind of trade we can get going on. Well, I, I know that um, all of you have different uh, skill sets, and, and I, I was hoping to have uh, Abby here, who has, I'm sure, Abby, I, I know uh, you have a particular interest in our our mission. Um, and would like and would like to see it succeed. And we've had a recent set of developments that are impeding the advancement of the Nebu project. I could help you. Well, let me just get down to it then. Um, so one of the issues with the Nebu is that the life support systems on it, from what I've been told, are and it makes sense, are extraordinarily complicated. They're not simple. This isn't your standard, you know, uh, ferry between asteroids or planets. This we're we're going in it for a long while, and there'll be a lot of people on on the ship as well. The um, the the issue at hand is that our uh, two of our lead scientists um, have uh, seem to have kind of disappeared from Tycho and the project. Um, of particular, uh, particularly if you, uh, to give you the names, um, is one, uh, Dr. Anna Bragenholm. Um, she was overseeing uh, a particular element, namely the, um, the, uh, engineering, the life support systems for this. Um, the other one is a, uh, Dr. Matteo Suri. Um, Dr. Matteo, uh, second here, oh, sorry, it's not copying correctly. Um, Dr. Matteo, uh, has been in charge of checking those systems for how they might interact with the, uh, neurophysiology of our, uh, flock. So, um, but we thought uh, Anna went missing uh, just a few months ago, and we thought maybe she had she's younger and she had been done with the project or just was lost interest somehow. We didn't really think much of it. Um, but a few weeks ago, uh, Dr. Siri just kind of upped and vanished, and he was very invested in the project. Um, so we're not sure if this is some sort of pattern or something's going on. Um, but regardless, I do. We do need them to complete the Navu 
uh, so we might make our journey to the stars. Um, and we have concerns over the security forces here on Tycho, uh, namely uh, Mr. Johnson's uh, role and um, relationship to the OPA. Um, so we're, we're looking for independent help that does not uh, coincide with any of uh, the powers that be here on the station. Does the job pay? The job does pay. We would we would pay uh, handsomely uh, for the return of both uh, doctors um, in, in a working state, of course, please. And along with their safety. Um, okay. If you want, if you want a number uh, for why it it would up your. Uh, it would up your income score by two, uh, your permanent score, income score, or you could get a temporary in income score bonus of six if you really wanted to like, blow it on something big. <laughs> That's a lot of money they're offering. The earth It's an earther's grip. <laughs> I'm willing to help. I don't know about the rest of the group here. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm... Uh... I could use a lot more uh, credits and money. I'm in. I think I would probably like lean forward a little bit uh, toward this guy and say, "Yeah, the money. The money is a good, a good thing. Yeah, but uh, 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 what about a job after? Uh, you, you Mormons, uh, you good at thinking outside the box, and uh, kind of want to travel with you on the Naboo." Are you wish to join the flock. Well, I, I think that we are going to be uh, crewed up. No, 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 no. Jackrabbit don't join no flock. Uh, just want want to fly fly uh, whatever ship you got there. You know. Well, there's plenty of we could. I could see helping secure you a position uh, in terms of uh, drones and uh, moving uh, goods around the Nevu. It is a large ship, so it would definitely you could. We would always look for individuals that could uh, work out in space nicely. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, well, I saw that, um, you know, my regular supplier came in here to this ad administration center and um, our deal fell through. So I'm hoping that maybe they recommended me for doing some business with you. So I would love to uh, be on board however you could use me. Well, uh, that's interesting. Actually, uh, and I gotta send another message real quick to somebody. Here we go. Uh, oops. Okay. Definitely uh, go where the money go. So he says, "I I see what you're saying. Um, we we do need goods, and uh, certainly, uh, Ms. Cooper, we we are aware of your." Uh, Roots of trade. I could see us setting up uh, some of the finalized items when we bring them on. Once the ship's done, I mean, obviously we we're, we're uh, more worried about our life support systems than we are of uh, the luxury goods at this moment. But I will definitely put you on that list. Yeah, I mean, you never know what uh, what some of your flock might need between now and then. So I'm happy to um, just kind of. Uh, learn from them and see what their needs are or on maybe on a smaller basis for your flock so they're comfortable for their journey maybe they feel comfortable about being here on Tycho um, so you know uh, obviously you have priorities because if we can't if you can't get it going it's not going anywhere and if you can't breathe <laughs> you're you're still like dead in space so again I'm happy to help out uh, stay out of your way and maybe help your flock on their journey you know, I'm sure a lot of them haven't had a lot of, um, you know, interactions necessarily with a lot of our fantastic Belta friends. So I'm happy to be a go-between also for any of your um, earthbound folks that are going to come out here and explore the stars. A, a more sustained position. I, I respect that. 
Um, this this can all be arranged, um, but at this moment, uh, time's a wasting. Let, let me provide you, and he, he brings up his uh, his little you know, palm tablet, and he sends to all of you, uh, if you have your tablet up or whatever it is, you guys get a little ding, uh, and it's basically a brief file on the two uh, engineers. Um, and I, I, if you, do you guys want to review it now? He says, well, he, he kind of stands up and he says, look, uh, he says, well, I appreciate your time and, and taking interest in this. Um, uh, you have my number uh, in there. Please contact me if you find this. Um, but I would appreciate if you kind of keep the uh, the exchange uh, on uh, out of the the hallways. Uh, I I'm worried that, like I said, I'm worried that Mr. Johnson is uh, overextending his uh, interests. Well, thank you very much. And uh, he stands up and he goes up and like, I mean, he he's walking to the door to open it for you and such. And I'll wait for some. I'll wait to be the last one to go out the door. All right. Uh, uh, why it's sizing this guy. If you look at this guy, I mean, he's not physically imposing. He's, you know, but he definitely has confidence. Um, you, you've met a few of uh, the Latter-day Saints uh, in your time on Palace Station. Uh, they were there, you know, uh, doing their mission work and such like that. And uh, and almost all of you have met a Latter-day Saint, uh, you know, where you're traveling or whatever it is, whether or not it's on a ship or it's, you know, it's at a gate or something like that. Um, they're often friendly. Um, and uh, but this guy. This guy's a true believer. Like 100 percent true believer. Uh, and you also know that. The amount of money and confidence he's talking about, to him, it feels like he's, this is, he doesn't really care about it because the mission is everything to him. So in that regard, if you were to view his, him as a soldier in his, uh, in his cause, you actually would respect that a lot, that he's a true believer of his cause. So, I'm going to uh, try to contact uh, Dr. Sari, okay. um, who was my contact, and see if I can't reach him to maybe ask a little bit more about what's going on. I okay. don't know if I can reach him since he just kind of ignored me coming in here. So, so you, you, you pull up your last known uh, number for Dr. Sari, uh, you remember from your earliest service in the UNN, and uh, you, you get a you get a you get a pickup. Someone picks up, um, or you, you send out the message. What are you gonna send to the message? Uh, you, the message seems to go to like almost like a voicemail, like a video message. Like it's not picking up. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm just gonna kind of put in your, you know, hey, this is me. I saw you walk past. I guess maybe you have some business. Maybe we could work on some business together. Uh, but I'm here on Tyco. In case you didn't see me, um, let's chat. Okay. All right, so you leave a message. Um, it says that the uh, you don't get a, a message received, which tells you that, that like wherever this is going, it's not going onto the station. It's going through the system um, somehow. Um, does anyone want to take a look at the, the dossiers, the little information you're provided? I would like to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I was um, going to say, what do they what do they say? Uh, let me get one person to go through one and one person to go through another. Who wants to go through which one first? Uh, let, me, let me have let me have uh, Abby and uh, Wyatt. Wyatt, which one do you want to go for, through first? I'll do Mateo. Mateo, okay. Doctor Siri Mateo. All right. So you pick up Doctor Siri Mateo. Uh, you get some basic information off the bat. One, uh, he's forty-seven years old, um, and he's from Earth. Uh, he's kind of it's for Earth. He's a little shorter. Um, he's maybe like uh, like five two, um, which to you is like being from Mars and being around Belters is very short. Um, but he looks like he's kind of built. Like, he actually has, like, a decent amount of muscle mass. Like, he's actually, uh, I don't say he works out, but he, you know, you wouldn't want to take a punch from him just arbitrarily. Um, he has his hair is kind of jagged, kind of all over the place. Uh, short-haired. It's dyed neon blue. The guy sticks out. Like, he's not, he's not trying to, like, go over a shaved head or something like that where everyone has a thing. Uh, no tattoos or anything like that. Dark brown eyes, bushy eyebrows. Um, he's got a nice square cleft jaw, um, and uh, often hasn't like completely shaven. Um, is based on what you're seeing from the the images in there. Um, you do find that um, uh, he is married. 
uh, to a Fiona Tan, and they have two children, uh, Alexa and uh, Caesar. They're 17 and 13. Um, they live on Tycho Station. How old were their ages again? 17, uh, 17 and 13. And they live on Tycho. So Alexa's getting to the age to start working, uh, where uh, Caesar's probably not working, probably just like learning and going to school or something to that effect. Um, you're pretty sure that if he's working for the Mormons uh, on the, the on Tycho, he's being privately educated on Tycho or has access to some sort of like uh, electronic um, course management system, we'll say. <laughs> um, yeah. And looking at his, uh, his specialty, he's a specialist in biochemistry and neurophysiology. Um, and his primary goal with uh, the engineers, uh, the environmental engineers uh, for the Davu is to make sure basically that like the systems don't slowly kill the passengers or cause birth defects. And he's been he's been here on Tycho Station working on that project for three years. Okay. Um, and then you get and then the last thing in the dossier is his last known coordinates. Um, he was last seen uh, about a little over three weeks ago at 6.33 p.m. Uh, Tycho time. Um, he was seen leaving his station on the Nauvoo. Um, so he showed up for work that day, then just didn't come back. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Abby. Uh, you're looking over the file uh, for uh, one Anna uh, Brogenholm. Dr. Anna Brogenholm. Um, you go and pull her information. Uh, really simple. Uh, she's 32 years old, tall, uh, slender build. Uh, she was born on uh, she was she was born on Luna, but spent most of her childhood on, on Earth. Uh, so she has kind of like a little little bit little bit of that that low G elongation, but it's not too bad. Um, her her parents could definitely afford like the drugs and the treatments to to get her uh, on on level. Um, you do find that she ha uh, she has prominent cheekbones, deep set blue eyes, long straw colored hair that she wears back in a ponytail. Often you see that in all her photos. Um, her specialty is she's an environmental control and life support specialist engineer. That's a lot of words, I know. Uh, the shorthand is E C L S S, uh, but we'll call it environmental engineer. Um, and she's been on the Nabu project for five years. Actually, uh, initially started as part of her uh, postdoc program. Um, and uh, she is the primary responsible for the environmental system design. Uh, Looking through the file further, she's single, no family on the station. Uh, she has like parents back on Earth, but that's uh, they don't. It doesn't seem like they're they haven't been out here. They're not involved. Uh, hell, you might you they may not even know that she's missing. Um, where Siri would definitely his his wife would definitely know that he's not there. Um, you do know uh, that she had a younger sister that was uh, killed in space. Uh, on a, just a random asteroid hit, hit their ship and her uh, sister died when she was 14. Um, she was last seen leaving this, the Nauvoo uh, station, the Nauvoo uh, project, uh, about three months ago at 5.24 uh, p.m. Tycho Station time. Uh, further information from the dossier you pick up. Uh, she's a loner, uh, tend to keep yourself. But the one thing that uh, you do notice in the record, and this is the kind of a contrast to Siri, um, Anna was a devout Mormon. She came to almost every service they had, uh, came by for constant uh, consultations. Um, and though she didn't really go to the social events, she didn't go to the board game night, guys. Um, but she did go. She did show up to all the other events. Uh, didn't go to the chili cookout, all that good stuff. But she definitely. Uh, came to the services where Dr. Siri didn't really, he came to some of the services sporadically. Um, his family didn't really come much. Um, but as far as the registration goes, he was a, he's a registered Latter-day Saint member. I was about to ask if I knew any of them from the bar where I work, but I'm guessing um, no. You, you take a look at the picture and uh, thinking back to your time working at the gas cap bar here on Tycho, um, you remember seeing Siri in there once, uh, but general and, and, and you remember him specifically because he was he was drinking with some friends, but he repeatedly did not imbibe alcoholic beverages. And you thought that was weird. Oh, yeah. And I would have said that. I saw this Koyo came in the bar once and he ordered. I uh, didn't even drink his own beer. I never trust anyone who don't drink, you know. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else have any kind of contributions or uh, so that's just the dossier. That's just you're you're reading the file that was given to you uh, by Apostle Birch. Anything? Any follow-ups? No. Uh, not really. Um, I uh, I didn't know. You know, I I knew um, I knew the doctor years ago. So it was interesting hearing updates. You know, with family and, and different things like that. Um, you know, I was surprised to uh, to realize that he was Mormon because he I never knew that when when I worked with him. So um, it's getting curiouser and curiouser. Uh, r- real quick, Myrtle, I, I can't remember. Uh, do, do you openly identify as like a UNN bet or is that like something you kind of? Oh keep yeah. On? Okay. So oh, you yeah. Have, do you have like, the, like you'd be like my uncle? He's got the, the navy tattoo on his arm. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about what about why? Do you do you openly identify that you're former MCRN? Um, not really. Not really. Okay. All right. But yeah, you. Yeah, you, I, I, you tell I'm happy you know him to the, talk you, about it. <laughs> do you tell him you know him from the service? Who are you talking Donna? about? Me? Oh, yeah. Your yeah. Siri? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, so Wyatt mentions, or sorry, sorry, Myrtle mentions that uh, she knows Siri, she remembers meeting Siri like almost 20 years ago in the service. Uh, so, uh, you're welcome to provide the context for that if you want to or not, but uh, that you you knew him somehow. Yeah, um, you know, back when I was doing my thing for the UNN on Luna, um, we ran into each other. He was doing some stuff for, um, he was a private contractor that his the, his company worked with the Navy quite a bit. So I got to know him there as uh, just, you know, working there on Luna and um, all the things that he was into with his, um, are the military and the company he worked for worked very closely. So everybody kind of knows each other and we worked a little bit on uh, on a job. But yeah, his whole thing about being no Mormon is brand new to me. The the I will say this, the uh the glamour of the Navu, like just having that big of a ship out here and saying we're gonna make the biggest ship and go out into the stars, has especially in the last like five, uh seven years, has driven a lot of people to actually I don't wanna say take take the take the Latter day Saints seriously, but it's definitely a game changer. It's like, whoa, they're going to do that. Like, and some people are like, that's cool. Good for them. And other people are like, holy shit, I want to get on that thing. Right. right. Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, that we have, we know people. I've certainly known people from Earth who have come to Luna to try to get more information, get jobs, whatever they can do to, um, to sign up for this journey. Because things aren't always that great, you know, down on Earth for some people. So any way that they can, you know, kind of get involved and some people are some people are believers and some people might not be. So it was surprising that he's an actual believer. And I, w- I want to be clear that this conversation is happening right outside, like the temple that's on Tycho, essentially, which is just kind of like a it's like a strip mall temple, like church. You know, I mean, that, that's all they can really do. Uh, I'm just realizing that, that like every single pretty much church in the belt is a strip mall church. Um, <laughs> I didn't really thought of it, but I guess it has to be. Um, so, but yeah, you guys are kind of hanging out, talking about this, uh, chatting it up, and people are going by. You can see stuff. People walking down the halls, uh, these these pathways, the artificial light, uh, the, the station, um, and like it's also one of those things where the closer you get to uh, the church here on Tycho, the more you see of the Navu images, billboards, mock-ups. You know, come come with us on our journey. You know, uh, we know where we're going. Do you type stuff? Oh, by the way, I forgot because the scene and for those that don't know at home, we have a thing called the churn. Uh, if you haven't watched the show or read the books, there's a thing called the churn. And the churn is as defined by Amos is when the jungle tears itself down and rebuilds itself and the rules of the game change. Uh, and we have a counter, which is going to now go up by one because that scene is over. There we go. Churn has gone up. Okay, we're at churn one. You guys are good. And by the way, those at home too, you can spend channel points to up or down the churn. And there's a community challenge called Full Throttle Hoss, where if you want to just jack the churn up to the next level, uh, where I get to do stuff that might really upset the group, uh, you're <laughs> welcome to put points on that, and I, I, it would be a lot of fun. So, all right. Um, 
So you guys kind of sit there and think you're thinking about this. Some of you guys, so one of you guys have an in with with uh, Doctor Siri, uh, Mateo. Um, Doctor Anna seems kind of like a, a mystery. She seems like the one that's really devout, but like why? Why? So it's, it's kind of like why was she abailed? Um, where Doctor Siri has a family here, and it's kind of like you know, why would he bail too? I would like to go visit his, uh, at least his wife. Okay. Um, that's pretty easy to pull. Like, it's not hard to find out where they live. Uh, they have a pretty nice residence. Uh, it's paid for. Um, it's part of his contract and such. Although you'd imagine, though, if he doesn't come back within so much so much time, that like they might be. Uh, I don't want to say evicted, but um, the uh, if if his replacement is hired by uh, the Mormons, they would probably be removed from that that location. Okay. So I was curious if, since I'm kind of a fringer background, would I know if someone was trying to sort of hide what I know the sort of like the crevices of Tycho and like where where you would go to not be found or different you, you avenues have some ideas. I could you got you got some ideas of like of like the deep of like kind of like the underground the underground here though is more it's not so much like crevices it's more of like a network of people um, and that can be pretty dangerous to go down but like uh, and it's one of those things too where if you wouldn't want to be caught by uh, Fred Johnson he would he's I don't say he rules with the iron fist, but he wants to know what's happening on his station. Yes, of course. Okay. And question about like, if, if there was a kid that was about thirteen, is there a place that would be like the obvious, like this is the school where this kid would get out? That they're you could doing mostly learning school, through like, um, like a system on like a, on a pad. Of it's it's remote learning, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to play a role playing game, and now we're going to talk about remote learning, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, trying to get away from this thing, but no, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it would be something through like a computer system. If he's getting a high grade education here on, on the station, um, if he was doing more of like, uh, if his kids were doing more of like hands on stuff, it would be like an internship here on the station or something with one of the companies, um, or you know, a dock hand thing. But they'd have to be much older, so maybe the seventeen year olds into that, but the younger one, the thirteen year old, probably be at home learning with the mom. And I would ask Myrtle, like, hey, you know this Koyo? Do you know? Uh, do you know his wife? No, no, he wasn't married when I met him. So, uh, so it's all new. I'm kind of surprised that he's he's done the settling down and having kids kind of thing. Um, he's pretty rough and tumble when I knew him 20 years ago. So, um, I, I've been interested to catch his story and see what's changed for him. I'm not the yeah. only disgruntled former Navy person. <laughs> you know my uncle. All right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right. So why why it throws out the idea that hey, you know, that's why don't we go talk? Let's go talk to his wife. See what's up. Maybe she knows something. She's got some sort of insight. Um, and and yeah. you know why you, you you've you've been around the block. You've you've interviewed spouses. You know people gone missing from spouses. Your your usual thing is like there's someone else. You know, but this guy is ditched out on like a once in a lifetime, very high paying job uh, to do his dream work on a dream project. So you're kind of like, you know, that whole that whole angle of it, like being like a, you know, another woman or man or something like that. It doesn't play out in your head. Like, like, no, nah, there's no way he would bail on that. Yeah. Um, but maybe you don't know thought, the guy. So maybe, you, you know. Yeah. My first thought is maybe somebody took him out to take his job. All right. So. Uh, do you guys want to head over to the, the residence? Yeah, you head over to the residence. Fine. Yeah. And also, like, probably, like, after this, I would probably, like, say, you know, this this girl, Anna, she's like a square. I never know squares that go missing. We should probably check her place, make sure she, certain, certain nothing fishy happened there. And you, you can, yeah, the dossier has their, their uh, quarters. Uh, her quarters are definitely a lot smaller than uh, Dr. Mateo's, or Dr. Series, uh, as, you know, she didn't have, a, she, didn't, she didn't bring a family with her. Um, but you do know that uh, she has a residence here. Uh, and, you know, you, you're not, you haven't been, uh, you, you've broken into your fair share of storage lockers. So, like, you know, this isn't, you, you could probably get into this thing if you really wanted to. Or you got, you know, you're, you, you were, you uh, were, You've seen um, Onyx fiddle with his tools. You know what he can do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, Onyx I mean, can get us in anywhere. I mean, maybe if you want to, we could we could split up and we can go check it over there. We need to go check for uh, Mateo. Yeah, I'm happy to go with Wyatt. Um, you know, it's that military connection. So maybe we're not, you know, we might get information that um, maybe other people wouldn't you know, give out to us. And since I'm a friendly face, it's possible that they know who I am and 
Um, maybe we can, you know, not have anything untoward happen and make this pretty easy to find out what's going on. Yeah, uh, and actually, uh, Merle, going through your data pad, you go back a ways, a way, ways back in your timeline, and you, you do find actually a, a stock photo of you on, on a base with him. Uh, just kind of working it's kind of a promotional photo type of thing you know showing oh, hey look how great we work with private contractors i mean this is it's garbage but you do best you you, know, you ask one of the expert ais to dig it up for you on your your thing and it pulls it up for you really easily um yeah, you on blue hair back then too <laughs> that photo's garbage <laughs> um all right abby uh what about you uh do you want to go see anna or do you want to go see mateo i'm gonna check on anna okay so I'm hearing I'm hearing Jackrabbit, Onyx, and Abby want to go see uh, Anna, and then I hear uh, Myrtle and Wyatt want to go see uh, Doctor Siri. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start with uh, Anna. Uh, so you guys you guys come to a residence. It's in a it's in a kind of stock apartment setup. Uh, it looks like a one bedroom suite type situation. Probably pretty nice actually inside. Uh, definitely nicer than any place uh, either Onyx or um, Jackrabbit have lived. Um, I mean, you, you see the door and it's it's got the standard lock and such on it uh this is something um i mean you're pretty sure you can get past it if you if you want to you're just more concerned about getting caught getting past it uh you want to take a shot at it or um i'll look at onyx and kind of just give him an eyebrow <laughs> oh i oh, yeah. see you always want the belters to do the dirty work okay okay this is no problem i got it yeah, that, that's actually one thing you notice about Abby. Abby kind of has this like little bit of a chip on her shoulder for an Earther, but it doesn't like um, it doesn't. She doesn't come off like the normal, like most of the Earthers, you know. For some reason, it, just, it throws you off a little bit. Um, all right, so it is a uh, intelligence uh, technology or ha- uh, yeah technology uh, check. Who wants to try and make the hack? Who's got the the tech skill? I got a plus two tech. But if anybody else has got one, nah, you do it. You do it. First roll. Yeah, go for it. All right. You got it, Abby. No, him. Onyx can go. Okay. Okay. I so, go. Uh, I got a thirteen. Thirteen. Where'd you go? The drama die. Uh, two. Two. Okay. <laughs> um, you you kind of go up to it and you start kind of cracking at it and uh, you make some pretty good progress on it. Uh, you're not alerting the security of it, but you don't quite get all the way through the system. Uh, but you're you're definitely on the way past it. Uh, you think if you have another good go on it, you might be able to get through. Uh, just a couple more minutes. This thing's a piece of junk. It sticks. Go, go for it. Give me another roll. Oh, all right. Okay, I got a 10 and a 5 on the drama. Okay, so this one, um, you, you start messing with it, and uh, it spurts at you a little bit. And you're the reason why it spurts is you you put your finger in the place to like prevent the alarm from going off, and you you take a quick little shock. Just lose one fortune for that. Ah! Okay. <laughs> oh. I just play it cool. Don't worry, he's just making sure his heart's still beating. You know. <laughs> oh, oh. The thing bites. Okay, the alarm's off. We're good to go. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, last shot for you, uh, Onyx. See if you can get it this time. Okay. Jesus. Uh, nine, and I get a two on the drama. Do you want to blow six fortune and push that to a six? Of course. Okay. So, so you see, like, 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 Mister Luck over here goes through it, and you actually manage to get it open. Uh, and also for spending that many fortune points for alternate <laughs> roll and getting a six on the drama die, uh, the churn goes up by two points. We're at churn three. All right. That was, that and by was the way, fast. guys, for those at home, uh, the churn stuff happens at 10, 20, and then 30. It's just, it's it's bad, guys. It's, it's pretty bad. Like, it's pretty bad. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you you go through and you get the door open and the, the seal opens up. Uh, the, the door kind of uh, goes to the one side. You see an apartment that looks a little uh, dusty, or not, I won't say dusty, but like it's a little unkempt. You can smell some kind of, I won't say rot, you smell some food kind of rotting, like in the, the paste dispenser not doing so well. Uh, but you, but the too. lights come on when you open the door, no problem. Yeah. Throw a motion to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you guys want to? What do you guys want to do? Uh, you see like a bed. You see there's like a view screen. Uh, there's a kitchenette in there with like some dispensers mostly. Um, private bathroom, which is pretty nice actually. 
does it look like uh well a couple of things first thing jack rabbit would do is walk over to wherever the food is and grab a snack okay. uh probably open up her cupboards uh getting like some some cookies checking her food for beer saying she's not here to eat it she's not here to drink it it don't matter uh, <laughs> uh there's no one there so one thing you do notice uh really quickly jack there's absolutely no alcohol in in the house uh, and the food's actually fairly healthy. Uh, you do manage to like get like uh, find some of like uh, bars, like some like protein bars that are pretty good, actually high quality protein bars that actually taste pretty good. Uh, but you go and yeah. stash like a handful of food in your bag. Uh, yeah. You know, kind of. Well, you're eat, you're eating with one hand and pocketing with the other. Yeah. So I'd put them in my uh, pockets. I'd I'd look at them. You want you want. I mean, is she not here to eat it? Uh, and if they do, I'd t- t- toss them over there. Um, is there like a place where um, like messages would be in this world? Like you, if we wanted yeah, to check, go, like are there uh, messages? You don't see like a tablet around, but you can see her main console, uh, which looks like it's um, uh, like you could like it would be active for her. It would rec- the the AI would recognize her and turn on for her. Um, but you might be able to either you do know people can hack that or try to simulate a voice somehow, maybe. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to go over that way and and kind of look at it and say I maybe we should check the check the messages and see maybe she be communicating to people about going somewhere or something like that. You you pull the screen pulls up when you walk up to it. It, it recognizes that you want to interact with it and it comes up in a guest mode. Uh, and you can see like it says like you know uh, primary user at the top like you know Anna uh, Brogenholm, but she's not present, so it's not logging you in for that. Um, that said, though, if you got someone that can hack, you might be able to like break the system and like get it to recognize you, perhaps. Um, and you might you have some photos of her too. You might be able to like uh, make it think that like she's present or something. I think the first thing I would do is put up the photo and just you know yeah right in front of the face. You pull the dossier. I try to turn off my Belter accent. And it's like, I do it a really it bad, it knows that's I fake. do a bad earth, earther, like, <laughs> I am Anna, like, I am Anna, uh, like, bad. Uh, okay, who, who know how to hack this shit? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sucking on my burnt, my shocked finger still. Ugh. I'll try it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to wash the door, by the way. I'm going to peek out. Uh, I got to pull sheets. Do I count the drama die in the total too? Yes. Okay, because I just did really good. Nice. Okay, good. Sixteen, Sorry. and my yeah. drama die is five. Okay, excellent. So you, yeah, you manage to like go up to it, Abby, and like you start pulling some photos, and, and you start telling your tablet to like compile like a an image of her basically, and start trying to feed that directly into the camera feed, and um, it seems to recognize her, but like you're not sure if it's like, it seems to, like log you in, and it kind of shows what her her desktop like essentially would look like last time she was logged in. But it's not it, you. You you really can't give it commands right now. It won't take any voice commands. I lied. It was seventeen. I forgot to add my point. Oh, that's good too. Yeah. So yeah, you 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 do really well on that. You get into the system. Uh, it opens up, but you're not. You don't have full access. Um, you do notice there's some like documents that were like last opened. Uh, mm-hmm. You can see a few messages that you can access. Like like they're they're on the screen, but they're not like fully blown up. But you think if you go and read them closely, you could probably pull them up. But like you don't think you could interact with the system further than just getting logged in. Can I see the timestamp? Uh, like yeah, the, the timestamps on the on these red messages are from about not too far off from that date, that three months ago that she went disappearing. So it's maybe like a few days beforehand. Okay. Um, but you you definitely see um, one message that's pretty prevalent. Uh, the one message you can read. Um, uh, you kind of dig. You kind of start reading it, and it looks like. Um, it references a job offer she had, like, uh, and there's a quote, there's a, there's a monetary quote there that's very high. Like, you're pretty sure she was making a lot of bank working f- uh, on the Nabu. This is like well, well above that um, for private, um, en- uh, private environmental engineering systems. Um, it, uh, looking at it though, you don't see any name attached to it. It's kind of an anonymous send, um, but it, it references them speaking. Uh, Previously, I don't. I don't know if I can while while it's happening. Can I open her closet and see if she packed a bag or anything like that? Okay. Does it look like uh, she's she's yeah? 
And, and Adam, don't forget you have the um, you have the, the hacking tr talent. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get to uh, you can uh, get additional information. So when you're going through this thing, um, you also notice some side notes real quick on on the side, the kind of things, and they're kind of little quips. And it's like a it's like a half a page of a diary, and it's her basically talking about how like um, because the the job's starting to get done, she's starting to get bored. Okay. And uh, she's she's finding as long as she's been here, the, the more she's found that her coworkers are I don't want to say pretend Mormons, but they're not quite as devout as she thinks they should be on this project. And it, Is there it, any way I can send that to myself, like to my data? Yeah, you, thing? Make, you make a you make a quick data copy of it. Like okay. off, you can use your thing to kind of copy it real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's kind of a private journal thing. It's not the whole thing, but it's just a little, a little piece of it. Uh, okay. Jack Rabbit, you go over and you look at a very well stocked closet of clothes that would not fit you. These clothes don't fit me. She doesn't look like she go anywhere either. Maybe Dude, they fit you Jack on Rabbit, it. How tall is Jack Rabbit? Uh, she's like not very tall. Uh, I have her four ten, like super 10? short. Okay, so you're you're a tiny little belter. Like honestly, it was the uh, you probably you you probably had like some didn't get the good bone density drugs as a kid. That's because all good things come in small packages, you know. <laughs> hey man, tiny tiny pilots are actually very valuable. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So yeah, you go ahead and uh, you you dig through the. Uh, you dig through her closet and like, yeah, it's very, very easily apparent that there was no packing done here whatsoever. Um, I mean, it even looks like she had stuff ready to like to make for dinner the, the night she, she went disappearing. So like, it's this is not. But you don't see any signs of struggle. Nothing's broken. Nothing's like distinctly missing. It's very, very nice place, actually. Well kept aside from the, the little bit of the pace that's rotting. Can I like check under her pillows and stuff to see if there's anything. Do you just want to like look casually, or do you want to toss the the, the mattress? I'm gonna to toss it. All right, so so you see Abby go over and toss this bed. You rip this bed apart. It's clean. There's nothing under there. Um, so there's no weapons. Like you guys kind of scavenge the place for a little bit. There's no weapons. Um, you don't see any like uh, loose pieces of technology. She kept everything digital. Um, but it looks like she probably spent more time at the office than here. There's no desks or anything else like that no, would be worth that rifling into. Okay. It, it's like it's like a, a it's like a bar with like a kitchenette, uh, a little bit of food spaces. Think like a galley kitchen, if you will, like a very tiny galley kitchen, and then um, like half the size of the kitchen on the Rothanante, uh, that big, and um, like a bed and a view screen and then a closet. It's it's very basic. Wonder if we can check the office too later after we uh, finish with this place. I mean, she does mention coworkers, so maybe they know something. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and up the churn because you guys finished the scene. And let's move on to uh, our fine military uh, ex, the veterans, we'll call them the veterans, <laughs> uh, of Myrtle and Wyatt. And I like that because like Myrtle is an M and Wyatt's a W, so it's like an M and a, like a W thing. We could do a little logo. It'd be all spinoff. Right. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, you guys, you guys come up to uh, Doctor Siri's uh, residence, uh, where his uh, wife Fiona Tan resides. Um, and uh, it look, you know, you're not sure if anyone's home, but like it definitely, it's in an area with like these kind of family units. Uh, there's not a whole lot of them on the station, but there's a few of them, and this is one of them. I think I'll let you uh, take the lead on this, Myrtle, and. Just back you up any way I can. And why okay. you keep an eye on you don't there's nothing suspicious in this neighborhood. People just go about their business. Uh, most people are coming here just going home or they're going to work. There's nothing you don't see any security agents walking around. Um, none of like like people in this area, they're not like the dock workers. Um, you're guessing this is mostly a block owned by the Latter day Saints. Okay. Alright, perfect. Okay, I'll uh, kind of ding the door. Right. You ring the doorbell? Mm -hmm. um, it buzzes for a second. Uh, a moment passes, and this uh, woman, uh, or this Earther woman, comes up and says, uh, can, I, "Can I help you?" And you can you can see behind her. There's, there's a kid behind like a bar, kind of like looking over. He's like sitting on a tablet, like you know, doing something with it. And he kind of looks over and seeing what you're doing. I'll wave that in. All right. And he's like, he's like, uh, "Can I can I help you?" 
Yeah, um, so I'm looking for Mateo. Um, oh. We were supposed to have some business earlier. Oh, by the way, my name is Myrtle Cooper, and I worked with Mateo on Luna like 20 years ago, so we go way back. And um, so I was looking for him because we were supposed to have a meeting, but oh. I can't find him. Do you um, do you know where he might be? But Mateo went Mateo went missing a few weeks ago. We don't know where he we went. Um, we've been we try to talk to uh, Mr. John. We try to talk to Tyco Security and uh, even maybe get Mr. Johnson involved, but they said they had nothing. Um, I uh, yeah, I'm sorry, he's not here. Um, gosh darn. There's something for a kid. And I'll kind of shoot the photo, the old photo of like him and I oh. together, the doctor and I together. It's just, it's just like, hey, here's this. Oh, so, um, so I am curious because was... I would like to help. Well, that, that'd be great. Um, we've been trying to get, uh, help from Tyco Security, but they said they have, they've, they've looked into it and they can't find any leads on it. Um, they have cameras all over this place, but no one knows where he went or where he left. Um, but I don't know. It, it just, it, it kind of strikes me as, this is just weird. I, I hope, I hope it wasn't the OPA that took him. That's what, uh, Apostle Birch seems to think. Has he been oh. having problems with the OPA? What's that? Has he been having problems with anybody in the OPA? Not that I know of. Uh, I mean, I've had my... Honestly, if anyone I'm having problems with here on the station, it's it's uh, the Latter-day Saints themselves. They're, um... You know, I, I appreciate the work and efforts, but, like, you know, if you talk to them, like, and you, you get you go to some services, you realize they don't... They really don't put a lot of women up on... in front of anybody. All, all those billboards, I mean, there's maybe one woman, woman on them at all, at all but... I was, you know, so I was hoping that our presence here, they might, I might be able to help out the church more, but they didn't seem to want me to do much more than just support Mateo. And, uh, how long have you been here? Oh, we, we came out here about three years ago, uh, for the project. Uh, you know, um, my, uh, you know, my, my, two, my two children are, uh, you know, they, they've been kind of learning out here and raising out here and hoping to pick up some skills and such. I know that, uh, uh, sorry, I remember the one kid's name. Uh, name, shoot. Alexa and C Caesar. That's it, Alexa. Yeah, Alexa's uh, currently off at uh, getting ready for uh, time in college uh, back on back on Luna and Earth. Uh, but uh, Caesar's been here learning. And I, I mean, I, I won't kid you, the, the Mormons have provided a, a really good educational set of modules for him. Yeah, they don't seem to be very, um, you know, open to women being involved in their business. Um, no offense, you know, that uh, calling your faith a business, but it, it has to be a business to be able to make this great journey that you're going to make. It is, uh, you know, the... I feel like uh, a woman's perspective on some of these decisions, uh, especially when you're talking about something like a generational ship, might matter. Right. So she's, you can tell she's getting like, this is something she hasn't talked about for a little while, but she's like, she's willing to vent about it if you really want her to vent about it. Sure, sure. Now, did, did they make any kind of promises to you that you would be able to be more involved? Nothing, no. We were just trying to, we were hoping, you know, I figured with Mateo's prevalent position on the, uh, in the project, they would at least baby entertain and, and paid for his family to come here I mean, it's not cheap you know we can't afford a place like this with without you know without the income or uh from the mormon's grace but that's what we're trying to do is i'm trying to get caesar through as many modules as, as much certification and such before uh as many grade levels as he can before we have to leave um, but i don't know if mateo's coming back i hope he's safe or but you know she's, and she gets a little upset thinking about that her, her life seems like in a brink of like chaos once this door opened up, she, you can tell that like, uh, she's very concerned with her family and is spending a lot of time with Caesar and trying to make sure he's okay. Cause that's all she can really do. You're not even sure if she's told her other child, uh, the one that's off in college, but, um, she seems almost at her wits end regards, uh, what could happen. Well, is it okay if we come in and we can chat further? C Caesar kind of looks and he says, yeah, let him on in. We go, we'll have a nice, we'll have some nice paste. 
and he's like eating like fucking the the fucking veggie paste and shit, you know? <laughs> like uh, he's got <laughs> like it's fucking like like he, like it's uh like he went to a frozen yogurt place or some shit. There's no toppings though; they're extra. Uh, the the the, the Latter Day Saint pockets are deep, but they can't spring for toppings. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, he's yeah he's he's eating. He's like he puts down his tablet and he goes over and sees and he like he looks at you guys and he's like. Oh, he's like we don't. I don't. He's like I don't ever gonna see too many. It's so infrequent we see Earthers that aren't with the the church. You know, he seems kind of excited to see you guys. Sure, and, he, sure. and he mistakes you Wyatt for an Earther. I'll I'll let him roll with it. Yeah. He's just like, As we're walking he's, in too, I want to kind of like just quickly examine the room and see what it's like. It's it's well kept. It's clean. Uh, you can tell that she's home a lot. Um, you're guessing based on how clean it is and like. What's going on? Um, actually, give me a. Um, let me get a check from you real quick. Uh, give me a um, perception intuition check if you have that, or just perception check. Yeah, I, that I have searching under perception. Okay. Uh, seven, the three on the drama day. Okay. You look around and like your best guess is like it's clean. Uh, she's home a fair amount. Um, it's. You're guessing she's home a lot. Doesn't have a lot to do with her. There's not a lot for her to do on Tycho. And she doesn't have any real reason to go take a hard job uh, here on Tycho either. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to kind of open my arms and, is, and just kind of. This must be so frustrating for you to see if she'll kind of come into a hug. Okay. You know, to kind of let down a little she, bit. She kind of looks back at her son and um, she's like, she's like, oh, my. I'm just I'm just glad someone knows him beyond the church. It, it's so it's so nice to hear from someone that actually like doesn't just care about his work on the project but his family. And she kind of gives you a uh, uh, give me a um, give me a communication. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, etiquette. Actually, I'm gonna go perception empathy. Perception empathy. Fifteen. It is an appropriate and receptive hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, she gives you a hug and she's like, "I appreciate it." She's she's not crying. She's you're guessing she's gonna cry in front of her kid, but um, yeah, she's she's definitely a little uh, taken aback uh, by how it's brought up again, and you can tell she's probably just biding her time until they have to leave. She's like, "I don't." Sure. She's like, and the thing is that she's like, "What blows my mind is like, but Mateo was so happy here. His coworkers." Uh, where you know, had them out. They would they would do hang out, and play board games. They would go do stuff. Um, I, I remember one night sitting around with them, watching them play cards, and all they did was talk about cheeses they've had. It was amazing. Um, and I hadn't seen them that happy in a long time. You know, I mean, he'd be happy with his family. Don't be wrong, he's a great dad. But you know, it's, it's nice to see him pursue his own things. And this was his dream. And now I'm here with my son. And I'm what am I supposed to do? Um. But I mean, you know, and they asked, they came by and they were bringing food for us, uh, you know, bringing consolation stuff, whatever they could for us when he went missing. But that's kind of petered off. Oh, well, let me give you my contact information and I'll zoom it on over to her. Okay. Yeah, she's, oh, thanks. Yeah, she's like, I'll, I'll be in kind of, I'm glad to know he has, he has, you know, old friends here. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm happy to help. And uh, do you have any? Uh, do you know have have any contact information for some of his friends? Maybe we can talk to them too. Yeah, she she goes. Oh, for sure. And she gives you the number of like. Uh, it's not the like any of like the names of the scientists, but it's their group number. Like it's it's their little pod number that he was uh, the main one he was involved with that he worked with one on one or as a, as a part of it. Okay. I'm gonna walk up to Caesar and see. Um... What kind of homework he's been working on? Um, you go over and take a look at it, and he's doing um, it's uh, astronomy. He's doing stuff like plotting out where different parts of the the solar system are. It's pretty elaborate. It isn't just like you know, here's like the planets. It's like here's these asteroids, and then like looking into uh, they're like trying to. He has a test coming up on like their different spin velocities, and then calculating their gravitational proximate pulls. Pretty smart, kid. He's like, oh, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be important, important uh, engineer like my dad someday. It's a good goal to have. Stick with it. 
yes sir he like he kind of gives you a salute you know he, he seems like a fun kid he seems like he seems like he's having a good life and he, his mom's definitely taking care of him um so they're you can tell they're going to do the best they can with with what they have left if they have to okay. all right i'll just kind of look over to myrtle and see if there's anything else she wants to ask and so i don't want to be imposing to the family We'll just kind of have a kind of a look between us, you know, that's like, well, I guess we've got some more things to, to talk about away from here. Um, so, you know, I want to reassure you that, you know, I don't want you to stress. Uh, we'll help you out the best you can. Um, you know, we have a contact there um, with the apostle and, you know, maybe we can, you know, check on your status, make sure that you're taken care of. Um, and I'll see if I can find some other ways that some of the women who are not visible might have a place for you to have, you know, some, uh, a community. That, that, that'd be great. Yeah. It, it's, it's just hard. Um, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming by and asking. And if you, if you find anything, please don't hesitate to contact me, to contact me and need anything, uh, we'll be here. You know, Absolutely. And she sees you out and like you know nods and such and you hear her and sees her go back to their their daily their routine hi caesar see you bye. later um so you guys you know uh that's a <clears throat> that's another scene churn and uh <laughs> uh uh so you you guys take a second here and um you uh kind of you know uh reconvene uh Go back to you know where you guys will pull your resources. Where you guys want to meet up? You guys want to meet up the gas cap? You guys want to meet up at a? Uh... I think I would have said like, after y'all figure we we go have a beer on the gas cap and maybe we charge it to the Mormons. Call it a business <laughs> expense, you know. I'm the, down. The, the, yeah. So so you do. There is one thing you do know here is that trying like you will never charge a drink to the Mormons on like <laughs> like they they have an account everywhere. This is not one of the places they have an account. I would call that like a like that would be like a target number twenty five deception check for you to try to like pull that off. <laughs> we tried it anyway. Right. You tried it anyway. Oh. It's, it's, but I, yeah. you, know, you got to have something to, something to shoot for, you know. Yeah. 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 And when we were talking about this, I'm like, it's all right. I'll buy us around. Okay. Yeah, and it's not a problem. I'm not gonna have you roll for it. Your your income's well enough to like to provide everyone a drink. So you, so you guys you guys all kind of come back and. Uh, Merle provides everyone uh, some beers and some drinks. You guys kind of sit around and getting ready to compare notes. Uh, you know, uh, Jack Rabbit. I assume you're, you know, you know, you know, Big Preen. You know, the the owner of the bar. Uh, she gives you the, you know, she gives you the uh, the mugs and such, and, and uh, lets you go bring back whatever one wants. And uh, you bring them over the table and sit down, and you guys look like you're ready to have your little study session. Yeah, it's nice that I can just get you beers. You don't have to wait for no one, but I still take tips, you know. I look so at what you, <laughs> what you'll find out. Well, it's interesting because uh, Matea was missing, and he hasn't been seen for weeks. But I saw him earlier, so it's curious that he hasn't seen his family. You, uh, yeah, you you remember. Um... You, uh, yeah, you, 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 you hadn't seen him on the, um, you haven't seen him on the, st I don't think, have you seen him on the station? Yeah, or I thought I saw him. Oh, you thought you saw him? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could have swear you saw him, yeah, or, uh, and then you, you remember seeing him at least once, Jack Rabbit, here in the bar, but that was like, I mean, it was like five, six months ago, he'd probably hang out with some friends, with some, you know, colleagues, whatever, passing through, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, he was here, he, he, he was a, had a presence, but, you yeah. know. And would I have like recognized the people he was with? No, they were they were kind of okay. transient. Uh, what you picked up on them was that like they were coming through the the station, going on to the next job, maybe somewhere in Ganymede or Titan or whatever it was, and uh, or even Phoebe for that matter. And they somehow uh, just stop by to have some drinks and whatever, talk about grad school times. You know, it's their it's their grad school friends come through town type thing. You know, okay. yeah. Cool, but nothing suspicious about it. No, I'd seen. I mean, aside from the guy didn't want to drink, that's why. That's why you remember. The, you remember uh, Doctor Siri. 
Yeah. The only thing suspicious was the way that that guy did not drink. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, I just not in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess maybe he he did. You know, either he was already a Mormon when I met him 20 years ago, or he's converted. Because that sounds like a, a real thing. Because you know, when we meet people who are just like in it for the money, um, and there's nothing wrong about that. But you know, if if your truth faith. You're not sneaking a beer. True. No. It depends. I think. I think we should talk to his co. Some of the co-workers, or we'll go check out their their workstations on the uh, Navu. Yeah, and, and I'll share the information with the group number, the pod number, and all that stuff, so everybody right. has it. All right. I like. Yeah. Not a problem. Um. Okay, so I heard, I heard, so yeah, you, you have this number of like basically where all the different science, like where their office is, the science office is. Um, that's really not an issue uh, at all. Uh, and you, you go ahead and you, you pull it up and uh, you guys can make your way over there. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to get that far in the, into the station. Uh, you start moving on over the Naboo project. Uh, they don't readily let people pass the gates into the Naboo project. But uh, you could, might be able to call them or talk to them or try to catch them on the way out, maybe. We could get a hold of um, Apostle and see if he can get us in there. Like, somehow without, you know, making a big fuss out of it. Yeah, we want to name drop him as much as we can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our friend... I also think that Abby's wanting to join the plot, but maybe just wants to know what the science part of it is, you know? Yeah. Or maybe you, Myrtle. I don't think they they would uh, they believe it if I say it me. Okay. Yeah, I could, I could, you know, I've done work with uh, science before, but, you know, I could always, I'm, science isn't my thing. So I can kind of bullshit through here, but um, I could definitely use some help on that. I could always do any, say they need any repairs for any of the computers. Yeah, I could take a look and help too. <laughs> okay. So these are options. Well, let's, uh, let's stop one of these uh, two mangs and talk to them. All right. So you guys kind of, uh, so you guys kind of hang out around the the uh, this major like facility that brings uh, the people of the Nauvoo in and out, um, and uh, you're kind of asking, you, you kind of ask around a little bit and like think you can stake them out or something like that or spot them out. Uh, who wants to be the one to approach one of these people? I'll do it. All right, all right, Wyatt. So you you go ahead and uh, you um. You hang out for you know like an hour or so, kind of watching people come and go. Um, you're not trying not to be too suspicious. Uh, go ahead and give me a um, I don't know. Let me check here. Uh, give me an intelligence security check. Intelligence security or uh, tactics. Your choice. So, tactics so if I have that, I had plus two, right? Yeah. So you get the you get the number and then the plus two actually. Yeah. So I rolled doubles, so three, six, ten, twelve. Twelve, okay. So you hang out for a while and you're 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 kinda of like you're kinda of kicking it casual and shooting the shit at people and you're making sure like you, you look like you belong there. And um the uh you see you, you, you usually kinda of, like you kinda of pull some number like you kinda of pull some information on these people and you see one of these these scientists coming out. Um, it's a, you know, it, it's, it's a, you know, uh, probably like late thirties woman coming out. Uh, you know, they have like their, their standard like gear on, uh, they're not wearing like their full like scientist gear, which is usually a little more like a little more, uh, uh, clean we'll say, uh, this is much more of like, like the suit and just, you know, common clothes and stuff like that. They probably changed in the locker room on the way up here and such. Okay. Uh, so I can approach her now. Yeah, sure. I just want to walk up to her and be like, you got a few minutes to... Oh, like, oh uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm not very good at this whole thing. Um, sorry. I said hi first. We'll start this over. Hello. 
Oh, yeah, hello. Uh, can I help you? Are you, uh, you know, Dr. Mateo? Oh, yeah, I I, I knew, I knew Mateo. Uh, is this concerning him? Yeah, we're kind of, uh... And her her name, if you want a name for her real quick, uh, her name is Rutha. R-U-T-H-A. All right, Rutha, um, I didn't know if you could, uh, help, uh, Help me figure out some information and find out maybe why Dr. Mateo has gone missing. If you have anything you can provide us. Um, me, I yeah, I, I can try. I mean, I, I've told everything I, I, I could to Tech of Security and to uh, uh, the, the Latter-day Saints, but I, I mean, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a little while since he's gone missing, but yeah, I can, I can tell you everything I know. What, what, what can I help you with? Is there a certain angle? Have you guys heard something? We haven't heard anything yet, but we're kind of curious what you've told Tycho and uh, Latter-day Saints. Um, I mean, he was really well liked and respected. I mean, he's working with him was a was a dream come true. He's one of the best in his field. Um, I mean, I had a hundred percent like confidence that the Nabu project, uh, his his part of the Nabu project, would work seamlessly. Did he seem um, distracted lately? D- distracted? Yeah. I mean, no, no, he seems keyed on getting this thing to work. Um, and we're, we're trying to go off his notes and what we have left of what he had set, what he, you know, he left for us. But, uh, I think we can finish it up without him, but it's going to probably, you know, his, his absence has definitely set us back a, almost a year. Um, I'll kind of look towards Myrtle and see if she has anything she can or anybody and just kind of glance over the whole group and see if they want to add anything. Okay. So you kind of look back at your friends and, and she kind of, she kind of sees you looking over them and she's like, what, what, who do you work for? Are, are you part of psycho security? Uh, no, we're kind of doing this on our own. We're just trying to be helpful. I'm the new sheriff in town. <laughs> look That's at right. me. I'm Fred Johnson now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw me in an airlock. Yeah. I'll just kind of, kind of like, Oh, you, Kind of thing. It's like, hey, you know. Um, so, Doctor Sari is a friend of mine, and so you know, I'm just just looking for him and just checking around and see. This is so fascinating what you people are doing for this amazing journey. She's like, oh yeah, it, for sure. It's we're you know, it's it's a. I mean, it's a hell of a product. It is, I, I can't imagine someone else getting to work on something like this in the next fifty years. Yeah, indeed. I mean, this is just massive. It's 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 a, a massive accomplishment for you know the belt for everyone that's a, a part of this. I mean, you must be so proud. Oh, I'll say absolutely. Um, but yeah. So back back to Mateo. I mean, is he? Did you guys get something new come up? Oh no, I'm just trying to track him down. I haven't seen him in a while because. Uh, we, we're friends from when uh, his time on Luna. Oh and yeah, I'm from I Luna. So I just wanted yeah, to he, check he in did with him. Some, he did some preliminary work on. Uh, I remember it was something about like uh, sustaining vacuum staged uh, injuries uh, for the UNN. I, I don't know. I don't think it ever came to complete fruition, and they they got worried about the cost of it. But yeah, it helped it helped land him this gig for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a really great project, um, but uh, you know. Who knows? Maybe sometime the project will get taken up again. There's so much to discover out here. Absolutely. There's always, there's always something beyond. And I'm sure the Naboo will discover plenty in its 100 uh, year journey. Um, but yeah, I mean, you want to know Mateo, well liked, well respected, uh, never had any issues. We used to play board games with him. Um, you know, I don't have much. Uh, uh, his family is nice. Uh, I, I haven't checked on um, his wife for a little bit, but uh, last we checked, she's still here, and uh, they're doing okay, as best they can, I guess. Well, if you if you see him around, because I know this is a big place, but if you see him around, um, can you just tell him to contact me? Uh, do you, you think he's still in the station? 
Well, I don't know. You know, I just kind of got here and I'm just checking around. So that, that's what's uh, weird. Is like if if he's still in the station, if he left the station, Tycho would know about it. Like, I I mean, Fred Johnson knows everything that happens on this station. Like, I mean, he's got his thumb on everything. I mean, as much as Apostle Birch thinks he's getting away with stuff or, uh, you know, Fred knows what's, what's up. So I'm, you know, I'm a little remiss on that. So... I mean, he could still be here, but then how does Tycho not know where he is? Do you see what I'm saying? So, I'm just Oh, you know, sense. the Nauvoo is really large, and there's so many projects going on, so maybe they're just not paying attention to just one person. Uh, maybe. Get lost in the shuffle. He's lost on that. She kind of looks back at, like, the dock and everything for it, and looks back, and she's like, if he's lost on that thing, ooh, ooh it's a needle on that haystack. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so yeah if, you, uh, if you hear from him or anything like that... You just can uh, let us know that that would be fantastic because I would love to meet up with them and learn more about the project and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I yeah, would say absolutely. also to stay in contact with his family because they're going to need it more now than ever before. Yeah. Um, what, what did uh, so I, I mean, have you? Yeah, go go read uh, or see what Tycho has to say about it. That's we were trying to get them to do more, but they didn't seem to either. I don't. They seem to care, but they didn't give us anything, and I don't. I don't know how they don't know where he is. So, are you here with family too? Oh no, no, not no. I, I'm here for the the work, and you know, I'm. I'll you know, I'm looking to do my family in a few decades here. Sure, sure. Oh, you got plenty of time. But uh, all right, well, I hope you guys. I hope you guys turn something up. Uh, the the team would love to have him back. We'll, we'll keep oh, looking. indeed. Such a good guy. Right. Thank you for uh, not yeah. like freaking out, and running away. Oh, and... No, yeah, she, th there's plenty. Of, you guys are like in a bustling area. There's plenty of people around. Like it would be very hard like she feels i don't say it's like, I guess she feels safe there and she goes this route all the time there's like cameras everywhere too so okay um this seems strange to all of you i'm i'm imagining she's gone or is she still there no she she walked away okay yeah this seems so strange you know like every time we try to talk to people it doesn't seem like there any reason i i just wonder who benefits right from this guy leaving uh uh, you know, they keep mentioning OPA, OPA, but I can't see what OPA might want with this. Uh, do we, I know, uh, it sounds like we go talk to Fred, we go figure out what's up with Tycho Station, but I'm also wondering, John, like, you know, might I, or I would ask them, anybody have a contact in the OPA and see if you can hear anything about this? Crickets. Crickets. Yeah. Either, either you don't or you don't want to admit it. I respect it. The first rule of OPA. Right. <laughs> um, so you you kind of like you kind of you kind of stand there talk about this and um, uh, Myrtle and Wyatt. You guys you know you guys just stand there. This this uh, this this Belcher woman uh, wearing like pretty standard uh, you know flight suit, pretty beat up. Kind of approaches you. Um, uh, and, and you think she's going to come talk to you, but then she walks right past you up to Onyx, and uh, she she goes. Uh, uh, you 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 look at you looking for uh, you looking for folks. I said, I go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a time to speak with us? We're looking for. Uh... Well, we, I I've been trying to get uh, well, well Johnson uh, help uh, help us find a. a of friends and loved ones that that went disappearing as well, but you find you looking for people disappearing too. Uh, we are, and I kind of look at the group. Um, you you want to come with us to, to get some uh, something to drink and uh, sit down and talk to us about it a little bit. I, I, I gotta I gotta go on my shift. I got I got I got a shift here. Uh, uh, cleaning up a bit, but uh, in a few. But if you guys are looking for people, I got. She like swipes over. Uh, like has this really cracked up terminal. Swipes over and like pulls you pull this photo of this guy named uh, Pedro Guang. Um, and she's like, my, my boyfriend, uh, I heard you guys talk about someone missing three weeks ago. My boyfriend been missing three weeks, too. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we're looking for all kinds of people. We're looking for uh, a Dr. Anna and a Dr. Mateo. And, uh, well, what's the last time you seen your boyfriend? 
uh, three Pedro. weeks back. He he go out for you know we we be out uh, you know we kind of down on our luck. I, I got a job the last week, but uh, we've been sleeping out by the docks and and kind of sleeping behind some crates here and there. And uh, he went out to go get some paste one morning and didn't come back. And everybody say we don't know. Tyco Station don't care about some just you know rough delta. Yeah, yeah. I know but, that. Uh, but you what, all what's, asking what's, and seeing real Beltas ask about it, I, I think maybe you help us out. Yeah, what 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 was uh, Pedro's uh, job on the uh, Navu? Oh, he don't have a job. We, don't, we, we weren't working at the time. Mm. We were just waiting for a uh, transport we could get work on to move on to the next uh, the next rock, but now, you know, oh. I was hoping he, I stayed around waiting for hoping he'd come back or, he, you know, he not missing too long. Sure, yeah. Have, have you heard any more rumors of why people are missing? No, but uh, Pedro ain't the only one. Uh, who else? Who else do you know? Oh, I got a few. Uh, and she goes through oh. and she pulls this little sh- and she shoots over uh, uh, a few more names. Are they all Beltalodas? Uh, they are all Beltalodas. Uh, she, you get, you see, the first name you see is one Liz Green. Um, like, like I said, and it looks like another Belta that's not like really. He made an appearance on the station and then just disappeared. Uh, no job here on the station. No real purpose aside from trying to get to the next rock. Um, but the the third name on the list. Um, uh, are you sharing the list with the group or? Yeah, right yeah. Now? Okay, so you, you, the third the third name on the list is one uh, named Titan uh, Rodre. Uh, T Y D E N. Um, name me Onyx. Uh, what's your name? What was uh, this? Oh, the person you're talking to's name? Yeah. Uh, go, uh, they, they call me Judah. Okay. Judah Bailey. Yeah. And uh, what can we find you, Judah, if we get information on Pedro? Uh, you hit me on my con. I, I'll be around the station at least for a while. I got the job lined up, so. But if you can, if you can uh, find my Pedro, that'd be great. Um, Jackrabbit, as you kind of stand there, like like you're looking at this list, and the name Titan kind of rings a bell for you. Uh, you remember growing up with a Titan on Eros. And you're not sure if it's the same person or not, but it's the, the, maybe it's a common name. You don't remember a last name from him, though, but this last name in this case is uh, one Titan uh, Rodre, R-O-D-R-E. I think I knew a Titan, maybe not the same guy, but from Eros. What do I know about this guy, John? The, this Titan? Yeah. It looks like just uh, he's some Belta that came through uh, unregistered, not really registered, like he didn't have a job here and wasn't really sure he was going, but he somehow like got work on a ship and then ended up here and just kind of like living on the docks unregistered for a little bit and just trying to get a job, but then just disappeared. That's what seems to be the commonality. And all three of these people would disappear on the same day, essentially. All As all the of these day. other people. I was just going to ask, because like, as people who've been on um, Tycho for a while, like three weeks ago, like if we're looking at our memories or if I'm looking through my little monitor, mm-hmm. what, was there anything that happened three weeks ago that was um, like even glitches and like maybe there was some parts of things shut down or like you, some I mean, explosions? You might be able to inquire. Or... Uh, that's not something like Tycho security is not going to tell you that they had glitches in their security system. Yeah, I think I'm meaning like or, or try to check their logs. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering about, like, either if we experienced them or if I were uh, kind of, you know, boop, boop, booping around, uh, if there was anything. Okay. Um, you're not seeing... Uh, yeah, you're trying to think back to that day and, like, I mean, you were working, and it, it you know, at the bar, and I mean, people were coming and going. It didn't seem like anything eventful. It wasn't like something crashed in or, you know, someone... There was a fight or something like that. Uh, if, this, if something like this, if there was something like this, it happened and it happened very quietly. Okay. Can I try to check their logs as I'm booping around? Uh, yeah, you want to try to hack into Tyco Security's logs? Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> okay. I don't okay. have I don't have the things, but okay, I got so Jack the improvisation sitting there like, stuff. Like Jackrabbit sitting there with their, their little Game Boy and is like, I'm going to hack this thing, watch this. Uh, and you guys, uh, Abby and uh, Onyx, you guys are look and actually Myrtle and Wyatt, you're like, please, please don't. <laughs> oh, you think this is a bad idea? 
I yeah, because like uh, the, the I want I need to make something very clear. You guys are on Fred Johnson station. You are on the Butcher of Anderson station. Zosh. Like he like like his wrath is is especially for Belters is like he will kill people on mass. Oh no. Uh, for, oh for yeah, sorry. So, like, Maybe that's not the it, no. smartest thing. Maybe <laughs> that's not the smartest thing to do. But you know, I sometimes it feels feels like it's a fun idea. You got enough fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I dodged shots for like two turns. Um, <laughs> well, they got they got about they got about six rounds of turn so or a shot. Yeah. So yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So you guys, you guys, you know, but you're sitting there thinking about like maybe you might be able to get, like you probably don't want to do it near the Navu uh, dock. You might want to go find a more secure position or a place where you could splice a little bit more into a direct line. Or you and might maybe we go where the. Security. And maybe we go do it on the Mormon terminal so they don't trace it to us. You know what I say? I like this idea. Yeah. Yeah. Can I message Claire to see if she's heard of any belters going missing? Uh, okay, so Claire, where, where's Claire living? I don't remember where I put it. Uh, let me double check. Uh, let me check my notes real quick. Yeah. Uh, Abby, Claire lives on Ceres. Uh, you would get a response yeah. in probably about a day or two. Or okay. no, sorry, no, not a day or two. You'd probably get a response in maybe like an hour. Okay. Or 30 minutes, something like that. It wouldn't be a priority message. Uh, this isn't like military tech you're using, but it takes about it takes about an hour for it to get there, then an hour to get to you. So maybe about two hours, yeah. Okay. So these three belters and the two doctors all went missing at the exact same time. Uh, one of the doctors went missing three months ago, and then uh, Dr. Se- Dr. Mateo Siri uh, went missing three weeks ago. So there's like four people went missing on one day you've confirmed. Okay. The the builders don't have time frames for it. Like they don't have like the last known thing. They haven't been given access to that. Or, like you know, the Mormons can be like, "Hey, Fred Johnson, give us the last footage of this guy." They're like, "All right, I'll give you that," but it's they don't have anything else. Okay. I don't know. I think our our best bet at this point it would be talking to Tycho Security. I mean, you know the trade. These are tradespeople. Yeah. Uh, you have. Uh, uh, why you have talked to Taco Security for as a uh, potential employer, mm-hmm. but you have not spoken to them in terms of like actually doing an investigation. They are professional. Uh, you you have to you have to admit that one thing is that um, a lot of the other security agencies in in the belt are largely just kind of gangsters with badges. Uh, Fred Johnson doesn't let that shit fly. But he runs a tight ship or station, yeah. if you will. You do respect that of him. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can go and like you can go and hit up a uh, Tyco Security uh, on your. You can call them if you want to, or you can um, uh, go and see go to one of the offices. Would we ever uh, see them at the bar? Like, do they go after? Yeah, a there's, shift? A, there's a few like, guys that come. There's a few officers that come in the bar. You might. I mean, you you might know one of them pretty well, like uh, a regular. You could probably go talk to. Because I'm wondering, maybe if we wait, we meet them at the bar. We give them some drink. Maybe they talk a little looser with their tongues. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that was a scene. Churn. All right. <laughs> We're like at five, right? <laughs> You're at six, dude. Here. Oh. Four more. Come on. And I want to mention, it does not reset at the end of the screen. It resets at the end of the adventure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fun. Does that seem... Would you, would you think, uh, Wyatt, you think it's best to go talk to them when they... When they thinking like uh, they on duty? Or maybe we find them at the bar... Uh, Myrtle buy them some drinks, you know. I like the idea of going to the bar and loosen them up a little bit. Maybe, um, maybe they will say something they wouldn't normally say at a station. I got the funds for that. I like this group. I like hanging with you, Myrtle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You could always meet them at the bar. I like how my when we, whenever I play this game, we always have like one Earther that has a lot of money, yeah. and the Belters are like, yeah. "You're amazing." Yeah. They're just throwing cash around. They're like, oh my god, this is, uh, yeah, best yeah, friends. I'm not. I'm not trying to tell Belters what to do. <laughs> I just think that uh, they're You're all okay. getting. Want to right, so be you, there for you. Just so want to be there what, for you. You wanted to go try to find like you want to try to go wait out one of the regulars, the security team regulars, or you wanted to talk to them at the bar. Mm-hmm. Okay, you guys go back to you guys back to the gas cap and you hang out for the night and kind of chill out. And um, this. Uh, the, the regular comes in, let me give you a name real quick. Uh, make sure I got the right sheet here. Give me a name. Uh, you come in and you, you see a security officer, uh, Jose. That's J-A-S-E, Jose. Uh, it's kind of like Jose, but it's like more Jose. 
Um, and he <laughs> comes on in and he, uh, you know, he greets everyone, has you know, has his beer and is chilling out with you guys all, chilling out. And uh, you know, he raises the glass to uh, Jack Rabbit. Uh, Jack, did you want to introduce him to your friend Wyatt? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. These are my friends. We hanging out. My friend Myrtle here. She buy us all drinks. She buy you drink too. Come on. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, no, maybe you know, let's all take some he, like, shots. He throws it up in the air. Oh, I've been, I've been yep, so, there's a few, yep, there's a few so. Earthers in there. They'll get uncomfortable, but like you know, people are cool with it. They're not doing OPA shit. Um, Delta and this guy, Lauda. Is that how I do it? Delta Lauda. Delta Lauda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say it. You gotta. You gotta open your mouth a little wider when you say it. Like you gotta do Delta Lauda. Delta Lauda. Yeah. Delta Lauda. All right, and like he's just pretty happy about it all, and he's kind of getting along. And um, but he's one of these guys. He's one of these Belter guys that can like bring in the accent. He can talk in a very like more Earther friendly version if he needs to, because he deals with a lot of people. Um, he's not high ranking. He's not like he's not commanding a squad, but he's like a low ranking sergeant. Um, you know, and so he's like, oh, so uh, yeah, this guy, why, yeah, you come in looking for job the other day, but uh, you not get that there, boss man? No. It didn't work out. Oh, that's too bad, man. He's like, well, I'll tell you what, well, well, I'll put, you know, if you're a friend of Jack Rabbit, you'll go be a friend of mine. I'll, I'll put a good word for you next time round comes up. Uh, so what, yeah, so what brings you all out here? What, what, uh, you got a whole party here, Jack Rabbit. You never know a party. Uh, yeah, <coughs> yeah, we, we, uh, we enjoying time. We enjoying time. Uh, hey, I got a question for you. Uh, you hear about the Belters that go missing? I mean, there'll be people going missing all the time on Tycho. We skip out, but uh, can you give me a time frame about when this happened? Yeah, and I'll give the three weeks ago. And one of them, a friend all... of mine, I want to make sure you're okay. Seems just strange they all go missing, you know? Yeah, he goes through, he pulls it up. He's like, oh, yeah, that day, yeah, a few, uh, got a few missing persons here. Yeah. yeah that was a, I don't know what happened there, but I don't think got on the ship and buggered off or what happened. Does he seem like he's telling the truth or kind of. Uh, you want to give me a what would be that check? That would be perception, intuition. Thirteen. Fifteen. Yeah, thirteen. Very good. Five. So yeah, yeah. He, um, I mean, he seems honest and like he seems like he knows Jack Rabbit. Uh, you're you're pretty sure if why if you ask him, he might not talk to you. But like Jack Rabbit, he seems pretty friendly with us. That kind of Belter uh, camaraderie that's going on there. I'm just gonna let them keep talking and just listen. And... Yeah, you're, yeah, you're kind of putting it in, trying to. You're taking, you're taking, putting things in your notepad and everything, like yeah. a true detective. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, he he's like going on and uh, you know chilling out with it and such. Uh, but yeah, he goes through. He's like, yeah, I left you miss a person that day. Was there, was there one in particular you're looking for? Yeah, my friend Titan. Uh, you know, and I also like keep finding other people. They say other people go missing, and I would name the belters first, okay. and then I would like throw in afterwards, like, and I guess some other Urtas also go missing too. You know, I would throw them in at the end. Oh, yeah, it yeah. seems kind of strange. Usually, it just it's belter, belter, Urta, Urta, not all together. It makes me feel a little worried. Yeah, we we, we put up all these belters. The uh, the facial recognition uh, find them a little bit here and there. Uh, we don't have really good records on most of them, but this this one you thought you say uh, this this Mateo. Yeah. He pulls him up. He's like, oh yeah. He pulls like a, he's got like an image like the last image of him on Tycho. It's actually in your dossier. And he's like, yeah, we we this one. I remember this one. Yeah, yeah. We uh we ran him. We ran that one. The the Latter Day Saints the LDS had us running that one hard. We ran that through uh, some of our uh, the one of the AIs we have, and it, it was trying to tell us that he was going off this way is what they thought with the body language, but we couldn't find nothing. We we pull uh, cameras that day; they don't work. Someone vandalized them all. Well, you say someone vandalized? Yeah, did, we you... have vandal. We we have a we had a string of vandal uh, vandalized cameras over here a few weeks back, uh, and that's when a lot of these folks went missing. Where they mm -hmm. where they vandalize? What part of uh, what part of the station that on? Uh, yeah, it was this kind of, he kind of, it's a, it, it, he kind of pulls it up on the map and he shows you like on the map where these cameras were vandalized and like they're, they're, they have repair, but he's pulling an older file and it, it says like basically the location between the docking station between the Nauvoo and to the like, uh, more common docks. It does like basically where like anybody can like, like the more, I don't say public docks, but you, could you pay for them? Uh, is there anything there that you can think about that would make somebody vandalize? Do they steal things there or what? Yeah, and he's like, he's like, give me, I pull a video, he pulled up the video, and you can see like the video is like following the guy, following uh, Mateo through, 
and you can see him going with like some people in like kind of weird these jumpsuits that don't have any markings on them and he's kind of being ushered with them and stuff like that too and then like they, he's like yeah and that's where the feet ends it, the cameras end out right there they don't they didn't follow him all the way through did he look like he was being forced through or um what? yeah like i mean like rushed or uh he might be under duress for sure you know who these coyos are? These ones in the suits? No, we were trying to pull tech on them, but they uh, there's no identifying marks in the suits um, and the like. Let me uh, let me take dick dick on that real quick. Run that through the uh, computer, and um, yeah, they. Uh, Uh, he says, wait, he's like, let me, let me line this up. Let me, let me try to do like a stride analysis or something like that. So he kind of goes through and like, um, he, he, I go through like, the, he goes through the, the thing and like finds like the strides and he's like, okay, he, he pulls this, this like clip that's maybe like a second and a half long. And he's like, yeah, they got picked up by the, he, can, he kind of zooms on the camera. Like it's a very distant shot and you can kind of make out their legs. He's like, looks like they're boarding a, one, one of the ships here. And he's like, looks like it's on a DACA. Whatever was on whatever was on two F that day, at that time. Two F. Yeah. So it looks like that maybe to take him off the station. Is that what we? Really maybe it see? looks like it. Yeah. Uh, these other these other belts, man. I don't I don't have enough information to pull their pull their faces. Uh, you know, or, or pull their information. They said I having like he's me, me go through the uh, loading on thing. And he kind of goes through and he says. Uh, He's like, uh, yeah, and he kind of, sh he shows pictures of him. Uh, Jackrabbit, you recognize Titan from your childhood. Being one of these guys that, that went missing. He's like, yeah, this looks like the three of them, but I don't have much camera footage of them. They were, they, they, you know, these, these dock dwellers are like living out behind, behind crates and stuff like that too. They kind of stay out of the camera's range. They know how to skirt the system. Wait, quick clarification, John. Was it that Titan was one of the people in the suits or somebody else that is No, he's one of the ones that went missing. He went missing. Okay, yeah. and is in the picture. Uh, they uh, he pulls up the records for that guy for for Titan coming onto the station, and you can see like his like basically like his passport photo, and it's him. Okay. You, you recognize he's a little older than when you were a kid, but like he's it's him. One of your one of your baratas from the commune on Eros. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's my friend Titan. That's my friend Titan. What does pitch yeah. again? It's when he come in, but does it mean he leave? I don't know. Maybe he'd go busy with this guy, too. Yeah, and I look around at my friends like, uh, what, you, what you all think? I think we I need think... to find out what ship was docked at 2F. Yeah, I, I, it's, uh, I think uh, that we go talk to the ship log. Go yeah, take a look at the ship log. Like, talk to the quartermaster, the dock master, whoever it be. Like, I, uh, I, he's like, I, I'd go look it up for you, but they're going to know I'm looking at it, and they don't get too happy unless I have a, a reason for Mr. Johnson. Oh yeah, yeah, Myrtle, you buy you buy this guy a drink again, hey? Yeah. Yeah, yep, sang. Yep, sang. Yeah, what do you? What, how does that go? Sam sang. Yum sang. Yum sang. Yum sang. Yeah, yeah, he gets in there. He's like, hey, That's I, a he's like yeah. I hope you find, I hope you find Alboratas and your, your doctor. Oh yeah, hey man, you thank, thank you, man. Doc, no problem. Doc, thank you. Just a friendly Earther. <laughs> Trying to make things easy for everyone. They'll just got a hard life. All right. So where do you guys want to, uh, where do you want to head next? Doc I would say F. To head on the docks. All right. <laughs> By the way, that was the end of a scene. Sure. Uh -oh. Seven. Um, I like the impending doom. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, by the way, turn 10 is not that bad. It's like, yeah. All right. So you guys head on, you guys head on, you head on the docks and, uh, Myrtle, you, you, you know the quartermaster here for better or for worse. Uh, too often it's been worse. Right. Um, guy, guys, uh, the, the gal's name is Roby Jackson. Um, you know, uh, you can go talk to her, talk to one of her workers, uh, but generally going to uh, the horse's mouth is a bit better of a solution here. Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds good. I'll go talk to her. I'll go with you. All right, why? You come on in. We got, so you come on in, the two of you come on in here. When, you know, you were trying to figure out these. Uh, you, got, you got you got your front man, you got your uh, and you got your lie detector here. So you guys kind of walk in. She sees you walk in. She goes, oh. "What? Did I lose something of yours again?" She seems annoyed oh. by you, Myrtle. Like, like, why are you? Like, you came unannounced. All this stuff. Like, she's like, "Come on!" Like, oh, I'm not trying to interfere. I'm, you know. 
Was this not business? What you here for pleasure? What what, uh, uh, what uh, what's going on? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Um, I'm looking for a friend, and uh, <laughs> so I'm hoping you can help me. Maybe uh, people in our business don't really have friends, do they? They're like, all right, what, what am I? What am I looking for? What do you need? All right, so I'm looking for this this chap, and I'll throw a little you picture. The, you show the doc information. Yep. She could look at that, and she says, uh, "That's that's proprietary information, uh, Miss Cooper." Oh, well, that's a shame. I mean, because we served together on Luna, you know, many years ago, and You're talking I was about just your buddy? hoping I could. He's like, hoping I could find him. That's not that not me, man. I I got to make a living here. You're you're pretty sure she's asking for a bribe. Sure, sure. Uh, well, you, go, you know, I, I do have a little bit of a tab over at the, um, you know, at the gas cap mm-hmm. and could probably, you know, like add your name, maybe help you out a little bit. If there's anything that, that you might need that, to make the job easier. That'd be nice for later, but I'm talking right now. All right. Just kind of look around and kind of dig in my pockets and make put a, some chips out. Make a uh, financial check. So uh, roll your... You have a plus six or something like that, or plus four? Yeah. You yeah roll. Like plus, plus six. Uh, nine, ten, sixteen. Okay. Yeah, you you, man, you you kind of shoot over some creds, and she's like, "Okay, I didn't I didn't know we were uh, this good of friends, Myrtle. Thank you." And she shoots you back details quite quickly. Um. So yeah, uh, you get details, and you get this. You get a name of a ship. Uh, you get the name is the Ebenezer Hazard. And the Ebenezer that, Hazard you, has, it's not registered with any company or it's, it's, yeah, it's not registered with any uh, company or anything like that. It's like some independent ship. Is it on the docks right now or is it gone? Uh, Wyatt, you get the name and you go outside and take a look at the the, the stands and uh, yeah, you see it's on the docks right now. It's at a different station uh, across. It's across the station on the other side, but it's it's docked currently. Okay. Well, um, I I, I don't want to get in your way of doing your job. I'm gonna try to do some hand signals that I don't <laughs> yeah, understand. My, she's like, credits are my job. You did my and we just worked. Thank you very much, Myrtle. Okay. I'm just kind of hand waving and okay. yeah, probably looking at me then, like I'm an idiot, but she's, not, she's, like, she's just she's she's a jackass. She's giving me the <laughs> obelisk look. Yeah, she's a jackass. Yeah, she she was she's uh she she's you guys have had run ins in the past, we'll say. So, oh, um, I, but, I still got I you know, I if you want to have a drink later, I got a little tab with your name on it over there. So we'll see you. All right, so you guys go ahead and uh, you manage to uh, get this like location. Uh, you guys come out with uh, you see Abby, Jackrabbit, and Onyx, and they're like, you know, how to go. Just tell them right where the ship is. Yeah. And, uh, I think we should. Um, I think we should head that way. <laughs> who who owned the ship? Did you find now? I, I don't think we got any information on who owned it. Just it was, indep- it's an independent uh, ship. Uh, owned by any corporations. You do, um, you do manage to pull a registered pilot and co-pilot name. Uh, take a little bit of time digging through the records. Uh, you find the names are Mia Gallagher is the pilot, and the co-pilot I I... is Jay Chen. Is there any kind of system we can look these names up to know? More information about them. Um, you you can you can do a query uh, if you want. If it's just a query on the station, it goes pretty quick. But if it's a query to other stations, it takes a few hours to get back to you. Um, or, but you might be able to find it there somewhere. If you have someone here who's good at hacking and like trying to like break into security systems, uh, you might have. They might be able to pull the information for you where they are on the station. I'll see what I can do. You guys, you guys want to head up to, to the to the, the ship, or do you want to try to find these people first? Uh, is I it on the way, maybe? Ship. I will. Uh, I mean, you could. It, it doesn't take that long to get across the station, honestly. But uh, you guys want to head? To, I, I'm here and head to the ship. I'm here and yeah, yeah. Walk and hack at the same time. That's walk what I'm wondering. Maybe yeah. Abby, you walk check and, it out for us. Walk and hack. Yeah, check it out. 
Um, okay. Uh, act give casually. Me, yeah, give me a quick, uh, Abby, give me a quick uh, security, uh, uh, intelligent security check. Fourteen. Fourteen, that's pretty good. Shoot. Um, so you kind of dig through it, and you find that the two of, that both um, Gallagher and Chen are currently uh, staying at a hotel here on the station. Um, they are... Uh, yeah, they're staying at a hotel, we'll say, called... Um, called the Left Portal. The left what? The left portal. P O R T A L. Yeah. But yeah, you find their names registered. There was a financial transaction for them personally to, to stay at this uh, hotel. Um, and it looks like they're they're currently checked in. Okay, I'll let everybody know. How far what's closer to where the ship is or that hotel is? The hotel will be on the way. Oh well, yeah. Maybe Might we talk to first. There. You folks uh want me to Kind of yes. check in with them and see if I can uh, find out anything while you check out the ship, or do you want to all go together? I mean, because that way we could, see if you, if everybody's together, that way we can see if there's anything. You know, everybody yeah. can observe some cool shit. Yeah, yeah maybe I can get on the ship and uh, we can look at the the uh, the controls and everything in the log and see it. Pretend we're going there to do like a maintenance check or something. If someone's guarding it. Okay. You guys, uh, so you guys are going to the ship first, or the hotel? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. I think we're gonna, we're gonna split. What, what are the two groups? I go with Donna hotel. Donna's going to the hotel. I'll go to the ship. 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 Sam. Yeah, I go with the people I go with before. Okay. All right. It's and a good group. Why you go to the hotel? <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with right. Myrtle. So you guys are getting ready to kind of, you guys start taking the same path together as you go. As you're walking down uh, through these kind of the Medina of the of the uh, station, so the main hallways, uh, three uh, officers, uh, including uh, your contact, you know, from the gas cap, uh, Jack Rabbit, uh, the one that gave the information, uh, walk out in front of you wearing uh, their uniforms for Tycho Station, uh, and uh, they they step out right in front of you guys, uh, put their hand up, and say. Uh, I want to like they're they're waving you over to come talk to them. They're not they're not they have they have their weapons, but they're not like pulling their weapons on you so like that too. I'll walk that way. All right, why you walk on up to them? Uh, is anyone else gonna walk up, or is you guys gonna stay back? Or yeah, well, I would walk up okay. since that's my hey, you friend. Know the guy, right? No, hey, yeah, hey, wait, ah, uh, back on the ship, I see. Hey, he's like he, he kind of looks at his buddies and he, like he gets kind of a serious look compared to what you guys have the camaraderie you have earlier. He says, um, "Mr. Johnson wants a word." Okay. And that's, that's where we end. Okay. Uh, <laughs> of course. All right. That that's gonna be the end of the first session. Is uh, Mr. Johnson wants a word. Um, thank you, everybody, Yay. for tuning in. I'm gonna go ahead and do the giveaway real quick. Uh, oh, yeah. Yay. And I'll let my the rest of my group here kind of say words just like that. We got a lot of entries. I got 16 of you. Uh, if you guys last nice. moment, you can put the word apostle into the chat and be entered for the giveaway for a uh, player. Uh, a player bundle from Green Room uh, Publishing, which is really kind of them to give away. We'll have uh, a giveaway next week as well for our episode on Wednesday. Um, oh yeah, the churn did go up though. So the churn's at eight. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let me go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the name here. Let me go ahead and hit it. And our winner is S. Dungan. S. Dungan. Oh. Uh, S. Dungan, I will uh, message you. Uh, and give you uh, instructions on how to get your uh, information and such, uh, and we'll uh, we'll get you that so you can start playing uh, the expanse on your own. There, uh, everybody, please go check out our. Uh, I put a, there's a link tree. Uh, you can check out all our stuff here. Um, if you want to support us on Patreon, we would love that. Uh, thank you for all the subscriptions today too. I really appreciate it, guys. That's like super cool of you. Um, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd like to hear, uh, just before we, we sign off, man, anyone have a, in the group have a, something to say? Just thanks, everybody that watched. Okay, uh, that's awesome. good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. And thanks to Green Run for everything, yeah. too. All right. And if yeah, you come join us on this, 
If you come join us on the station, Myrtle will buy you drinks. No? <laughs> hey! you, gotta, you, gotta make your, go. you, gotta, you gotta do your own travel to the belt, but we'll buy you drinks if you make yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta get yourself there first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, guys. All right, well, we're going to bounce out. I'll see you guys next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, I'm going to have my, my buddy uh, Balatroz, Balatroz play us out uh, and everything. So thank you so much, guys. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>